on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Praise God. Amen. And David said to Abathar the priest, that would be Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me thither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? He answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and his 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Bezer, where those that were left behind stayed, David pursued, he and the 400 men, 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook of Bezer. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. They gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins and when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. David said unto him, To whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I'm a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. My master left me because three days ago I got sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? He said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. When he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah, Ziklag to be exact. And David smote... From them, from twilight even to the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them, save four hundred young men, which rode upon camels and fled. David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued these two wives. And there was nothing lacking of them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. David took all the flocks and all the herds which they drave before those other cattle and said, This is David's spoil. David came to the 200 men, which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to abide at the brook of Bezer. They went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. And answered all the wicked men and men of Belial of those that went with David and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil which we have recovered. Save every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Then said David, Ye shall not do so, my brethren. With that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us and delivered us to the company that came against us into our hand. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as the part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall be his part that tarrieth by the stuff. They shall part alike. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statute in the ordinance of Israel unto this day. Jesus, we are in your presence tonight, thankful, for Lord, for the worship that has gone up in this place. We pray, O Lord, 
and that as uh, the worship has gone up, the blessings also come down. Be with us as we minister on this subject tonight. There may be someone here that needs encouragement. Give them strength. It's a continuation of our service this morning. Be with us, O Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. David encouraged himself in the Lord. It says so in verse number six of this chapter. From time to time in your life and in mine, we will need encouragement. Say, so why is that? There are times when we will face crisis, and everybody does, and things seem to fall apart. Other times you become discouraged. Things go wrong, and you're trying to do what's right. Other times you're uncertain and shaky, uh, don't know what to do or how things are going to turn out. Other times stress comes your way and the load seems heavier than you can bear or the task at hand is greater than what you think you can handle. And then there are times when we're afraid and fear overtakes us and our security is threatened. Oh yes, from time to time there is a need in everybody's life for encouragement. Where is that source of encouragement going to come from? In David's case here, Verse 6 was very plain, in the midst of a time of great distress and discouragement and debt. There's three Ds that's not too good. <laughs> that was all against David. And uh, he strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Now, that sounds great. But what does it really mean to encourage oneself in the Lord? And how does one get the courage or the strength or muster was ever needed to do that? So we're going to examine the passage here a little bit. And find out what the secret is. For David and his company, he had 600 men and they were in Gath. Now Gath was not Israelite territory, it was Philistine territory. They were there serving in the military under King Asius of Gath. Now you know that the Philistines were the enemies of the Israelites. What was David doing there to begin with? But he had a portion of land there. Ziklag was given to his wives, his children, and these 600 men. But uh, they left Ziklag to go in pursuit of some more territory for the Philistines. And uh, in doing so, they left their wives and their children behind. And Ziklag was not a walled or protected city. So they were very vulnerable. While they're away trying to get more land for King Asius, the enemy. And then their enemy came down and plundered uh, David's territory. A band of the Amalekites came down to the south. They were also persistent and longtime enemies of Israel. But they came to Ziklag. They found it unprotected. I don't know if they knew it was David's territory or not. But they went in, captured the place, took the women, sons and daughters captive. And then looted the place and took away everything of value. And left nothing behind except a smoking pile of rubble. In the scripture account, verse number one, it said it happened that when David's men came back from where they were, it was three days later, and they found out the Amalekites had invaded the south and burned David's city, Ziklag, with fire. And verse two said they took captive the women and the children. And uh, when David and his men came to the city, of course, they were in shock, seeing nothing but a pile of rubble. David and his men arrived home. All there was was just smoking remains of what once was. Everything was gone. Everything dear to them, all household, all material goods. Now, what would happen if that was you? You would think like your life literally fell apart. And it did for David. Matter of fact, that was just the beginning of the story. It fell apart worse. Say, what was it? The men that he took with them to do the fight and to get more terror for the king of Gath now turn on David and said, David, if you'd have left us alone, left us home, we would have protected our wives and children. This wouldn't happen. It's your fault. It's one thing to be <laughs> trying to do good, but then someone accusing you of doing it all wrong. Life was really falling apart here for David. Oh, man, it said that every man among David's army, them 600 men and David himself, they wept, lift up their voice, and cried until there was no more power to weep. I don't know if you'll identify with that. It's been years since that's happened to me, but I do remember a couple instances in my life where I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. 
until there were no more tears to cry. Anyone else want to admit to that ever happening to them? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not a very good feeling, is it? No more power or tears to cry. David was greatly distressed, it said there. And then the people talked about stoning him because all of them were grieved for his sons and daughters and their possessions. And some went so far as to suggest, let's stone David. And uh, it's always easier to blame someone else for your troubles. But what uh, does all that that I've mentioned have to do with encouraging yourself in the Lord? Well, a lot of times when uh, things go wrong, <laughs> you go to everybody else first, get this one's advice, that one's advice, and however many you go to will be how many answers you get. <laughs> Why not go to the Lord in prayer? Yes, David, that's what he did. Everyone else was in despair. No one could talk. They were too busy crying and weeping. But he was in a pit of despair. Instead of spending time with, uh, with God and asking him what to do, uh, the 600 men did what was stupid. You say, what was stupid? Uh, they blamed others for their problems. And if you blame others for their problems, then you get more problems still, because when you realize what you did, then you're going to have to make some things right. Do you know it's a fact that when people hurt, they hurt other people? And that may help us to understand sometimes why sometimes people leash out at us when they have nothing to leash out at us for. They're hurting. <laughs> and if we knew that was behind it, it might not be so hard to help them and give the soft answer <laughs> that turns away wrath. So do yourself a favor when, when trouble comes and behave yourself so that you won't compound the problem and have two problems to solve. Think of what was going through David's mind when he came to the brow of the hill and seen his city laid in ashes. At that point, he didn't know what had happened to his wives or his sons and daughters or anything else. He just knew that there was nothing left. What was the outcome? I'll tell you what, that would not be a comfortable feeling. David had a choice to make. He could either stand there and continue to look or do something about it. And he decided, well, I might as well take another few steps, go in and see how bad this is, and see what might be done. And then when he saw the extent of it, he uh, chose to seek God for some direction and strength to carry on. Verse 6 puts it in context when he said, he strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And David had lost so much, and more than any man that was with him, his only possession at that time were the clothes on his back. But he said, i got to come out of this somehow. Everything's gone wrong. They took away all my property, all my possessions, all my family. All I've got is just smoking embers of what I had yesterday. But they can't take away my God. I still got the Lord God with me, and he will help me. All he could say was my house, my city. But he soon learned how to say, my God. Ha <laughs> ha, that was all left. Amen. So uh, you know it pays to know God in a time of trouble. Now there's some people who tell you they know God, and that, well, really they only know about him or all of him, but in time of trouble they'll really know how much of them they do know. David was able to strengthen himself and get to the house of the Lord, and no matter what losses was upon him, he said, I still got my God. And my God is enough. Hallelujah. My God is enough. He will supply all my need. He'll help me. He is my El Shaddai. You know that song or that course? It's a great encouragement. Uh, how is it possible to strengthen yourself in the Lord? Now, uh, he had a, a friend who would help him along, Jonathan. But Jonathan was now dead. Jonathan always strengthened David's hand. Especially when Saul was after David's life, Jonathan helped him. And there's a scripture in 1 Samuel 23 and verse 17 said, Do not fear for the hand of Saul shall not find you. You shall be a great king over Israel. These were Jonathan's words. Jonathan was the son of Saul, the guy that was after David. But Jonathan strengthened David's hand. To strengthen ourselves in God means that we will remind ourselves of the scriptures and the promises of God, and then apply those truths to our current situation. 
So in other words, number one, if you're going to encourage yourself in the Lord, you go to the Scriptures. Do you ever have the Scripture speak to you? Do you ever have the Word of God to speak to you? Amen. It's like Alan says, you've got to read it in order for it to speak to you. Right. We need to read the Word of the Lord. So he strengthened himself in the Lord. It was an intentional act on his behalf. He went down to the... Uh, uh, place and got the priest there and he said i want you to bring me the ephod i want to inquire of the lord and the ephod was brought to him and he reminded him of the scriptures that he himself had written in the psalms psalm 43 and 5 how it said that uh, the lord is the help of my countenance and he is my god the lord gave him to that earlier to help in this time of very need and so david was encouraged himself in the Lord through the scriptures that is God's word. So we can learn some things from this situation here and that uh, we'll always go to the word of God when we need some help because the word of God will always be a source of encouragement. I could read verse 7 and 8 to you again. David said to Abathar the priest, and him like son, bring me the ephod. Abathar brought the ephod. David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake? And the Lord answered, pursue, overtake, and recover all. It's great when you got an answer from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Great satisfaction on that. Seems obvious that David sought the Lord's leadership and, and the people that were following him or following him for how he knew God. In fact, and what he was doing was uh, following after God and seeking his heart. The 600 men that with him, their hearts wasn't for God like David's was. He was just leading a bunch of people that were discouraged, in debt, and just like he was, the three Ds, okay? So this time before making a move, he sought God, and God was with him, reminding him of scriptures he had talked to him about before. And from that point on, David could look back and, and boast himself in the Lord. He said, in that day, I cried out, you answer me and made me bold in the strength of my soul. Psalm 138 and 3. Wow. David got the word of the Lord and it encouraged him. He believed God. He acted upon the belief and he went after that band of the Amalekites that had taken all his stuff. And he got it back just like the Lord said that he would do. Oh, to trust in the Lord and put our faith in him and in his word, then we are going to be winners. Yeah. Praise God. Now, after they had won this battle, they're on their way back home again, back home. There's nothing there. There's still the pile of rubble, ashes, and everything. And there was 200 of the 600 men that were so faint they couldn't make the journey. They stopped at Bezor. Stayed by a bunch of supplies while 400 went on after the Amalekites. And they met them there. Well, that was a problem for the rest of the army. David's 400 men. We won. We got back everything that they took. And my, aren't we going to fly on the spoils and have ourselves a time? And victory is sweet. You guys, you were so faint, discouraged, you stayed behind me, you didn't fight. You're not getting a thing. Sometimes that's the attitude of the flesh. <laughs> you know, and David looked at them and said, guys, hang on for a minute. There's 600 of us. 600 started. There were 200 that could faint by the way, but they stood by the stuff while we fought. We're going to divide the spoils 600 ways, not 400. As him that's by the stuff, so he that father. Everybody was uh, part of this victory. It's like that in the church, folks. <laughs> the Lord says you rejoice with them that rejoice and you weep with those that weep. <laughs> when we have a victory, we'll all shout together. We'll all dance and have a time in the Lord. There's no such thing as big eyes and little U's. We're all part of a body. We all have a necessary part to play. We'll all share in the victory. Yeah, right. And he made that a decree throughout Israel from then on, and that's the principle in God's word that we should always live by. David acknowledged where his help come from. His help came from the Lord. Verse 11 through to 19, it was the Lord that brought the victory. I don't have to read it over again, and I think I'll read again the punchline, which is my third point, share and share alike, and that brings me right down to the end of my message. Oh, there's a lot I could say in there, but I think you got the point.
Let me review it for you. If you want to encourage yourself in the Lord, first of all, you seek his guidance and direction. You get it in the word of God. Let him speak to you. And then where the Lord leaves you or what he tells you, you need to do, and he'll provide where he takes you. And then the third thing, when you get the victory, learn how to share. Raise on. You say, if you'll do that, you'll be one that can, can encourage others when they are discouraged. Because you're a winner. Raise on. Let's stand tonight. Sister, if you come back to the piano. Oh, to encourage ourselves in the Lord. I like it when a brother and sister encourages me. I like it when my own family encourages me. But I really like it when I get into the word of the Lord and he talks to me and encourages me. Always know you can be safe with a word from God. And that he won't put anything upon you too hard to bear. He'll always provide for you where he takes you. And then we need to learn to share in the spoils. Amen. The need for encouragement. David encouraged himself in the Lord. You can encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Let's come to the front here tonight. Spend some moments here around the altar before we leave. And be encouraged.